welcome to Meanwhile at the Podcast. A podcast <laughs> with no. a Meanwhile Start at the again. Podcast. Start again. <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay. Welcome to Meanwhile at the Castle Podcast. I'm Queen Emily. I'm Queen Deborah. And we are queens of our castles, keeping the domestic arts alive. Today is Tuesday, July 2nd, and we're coming from you, to you from Salt Lake City. And this is a podcast about knitting and crocheting and all kinds of making, and we're happy to be with you today. Thank you. Today we are going to have a life update, announce winners for our giveaway that we introduced last time. We're going to share our finished objects, work in progress. There will be some um, cross-stitch included in there. There definitely will be. And we're excited because this time we have another episode of Snippets from the Past. Awesome. So that's been um, one of our most favorite and requested, mm -hmm. uh, what would the word be? Uh, segments. 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 That's yes. what I was trying to remember. Segments. Yeah, we, which we, we have people comment on that all the time. Yeah. And that's great. And then we'll have shop news and then the end where we'll all cry. I won't cry because lunch is coming up. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm like trying to get this fray check to work. The, the nozzle is blocked. Well, that's okay. Let's start with our giveaway. So wait, if you're, wait, we're starting with our life I update. I forgot. We're starting with our life update. You have to wait for the giveaway. Sorry. Life update. Tell me about your life. Emily. Where's my life? Oh goodness, let's see. It's summer and those of you who've been with us for a while know summer is really crazy. So our um my life is kicking into super duper high gear with heroic youth um, and all of the things that go along with that. Um, also preparing for our school year coming up. Um, there's a ton that's going on with that. Um, we both belong to a small, it's called a Commonwealth school. And I've had Don't people ask us. <laughs> <laughs> I've had people ask us about this before. So we do both homeschool, but we also belong to this Commonwealth school. And it is a one day a week school group that is kind of halfway between a a parents co-op and a private school. That's the easiest way I can kind of describe it. But mm -hmm. um we we both are very involved in the administration of that and um so we're busy working on that. Um, but some good things that are happening. First of all, I have been waiting for this forever. I what? am this close to having a studio. It's oh, yay! almost yay. done. The carpet went in and it's just waiting for the moldings, the baseboards, blinds, and a few finishing touches and I get to move in. That is very nice. I'm I, so excited. I spent some time cleaning this one, mine, and it looks like I haven't done anything in here. <laughs> like, what did I spend all my time doing in here? Because it looks the same. <laughs> mine will be a little smaller than yours, but I'm just really excited about it. And I don't do quite as much sewing, so it will be sewing space, but it's also going to be knitting space. And just, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. So that's coming up pretty quick. So what's going on with you guys? Um... We went to girls camp, which is a like church camp for the young women in our congregation. And I had this brilliant idea that I should volunteer to be the camp chef <laughs> because I know that they needed some help. And, and you wanted there to be good food. And I, just my <laughs> kids wanted there to be good food. <laughs> and so I offered to go cook, not just that, but there's a lot of different dietary restrictions um, in our group. And not a lot of people know how to handle that and for me that's something that I know how to do so I thought that would be helpful so I went but then right beforehand I remembered that the location we were going to is notorious for ticks oh no and I am terrified of that and then I heard the news that a group went up just a few days beforehand and they were everywhere like the worst they've ever seen with ticks and I was just like what did I get myself into? Because when I was a youth, I missed camp um, a couple of times because I was so afraid of ticks. So I talked to one of my friends who grew up in Texas and she says, they just fell on us from the trees. They came out of the sky. She's like, it was just a normal part of life. So anyways, we all survived and came home without a single one. I did, I will say for my children and myself, make our own essential oil um, tick repellent 
because the stuff you spray on is terrible for you. Oh, and it stinks. also didn't help a single person that went up the week before because <laughs> they covered themselves in it and they all came home with ticks. So oh. I'm like, I'm going to make my own because it can't be any better. It can only be, or it can't be any worse. It can only be better. So I used um, just water and what did I use? Eucalyptus oil, rosemary, lemon, and one other. It's Melaleuca tea tree oil. Mm. So I used those in there. And I don't even know how much I put in. I just poured some in because I wanted it to work. I need to figure something like that out for mosquito repellent because yeah. mosquitoes are attracted to me. Like they come from yeah. out of state. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, that's that's it's what Ella Destination has. vacation, Emily. <laughs> yep. So uh, we did have some, Ella didn't get any mosquito bites amazingly because she gets them quite severe. Like they, she has terrible reactions. She did have some bug bites, but no ticks, no problems with mosquitoes. So Yay. everything's good. We did have an issue with a tent and some rain for one of the leaders that were going up, some of the adults. And so we crammed a whole bunch of people into this tiny tent and it was freezing cold but in the end we had a good time and there was good food that was good oh so. another fun thing um ethan my oldest has um always kind of liked rock climbing and hasn't had as much opportunity in recent years to do it so just recently he decided he wanted to start back into that and he has talked abby my youngest mm -hmm. who has always been afraid of heights to go try out some rock climbing, just oh, at just cool. at like the rec center where they yeah. have they have some like a climbing wall, and so they went last night and she did it. She she didn't go super high, but she tried it several times. Did like three or four climbs, and I thought that was just really great. That so was good. that was fun. I'm just looking at this cake of yarn, and it's an interesting shape. <laughs> Isn't it funny? Look at this. It just keeps getting. It's what you actually narrow. think a cake of yarn would do because this is how tall it was when I caked it up. And it is just shrinking in instead of changing its shape. So it's kind of surprising. But. I know. I'm just like, keep <laughs> looking over like, that's unusual. Okay. <laughs> that's funny. All right. On to our giveaway. Yes. Exciting. So if you remember last time we um, challenged you to go and do the training about how to recognize child trafficking, human trafficking, and what to do about it. And that training was available through our rescue, OURrescue.org, which is Operation Underground Railroad. And anybody who completed that training took a screenshot of their certificate and posted it and tagged us, um, was entered into this prize drawing. And we had a lot of you, and I am so I grateful know. to you, yeah. because what what a great way to just increase your abilities to respond yeah. if you ever do see a problem like how to recognize that it just increases your power when you have more knowledge and so that's just awesome so we have drawn for our two prizes so the first prize um i apologize but i did not bring it with me today to come and podcast i mistakenly left it out but it includes the beautiful gray and white bag from Mountain Candy. It includes the um, Dumbledore sock set from my Hogwarts Library uh, Mystery Club. And this cute Lemon Drop Progress Keeper. Cause you know, you have to have a Lemon Drop Progress Keeper to go with yep. Alice Dumbledore. Um, that Deborah made. So great job. Thanks. And the winner for this first um, prize you will contact me the winner is on Instagram Sarah one Daisy Sarah Holmes so you're the winner so please contact me through my email which is saltcityknits at gmail.com and give me your mailing information and I will get that prize out to you okay our second prize is this cute Japanese knot bag from Mountain Candy and a set of minis in my Sweet Tooth collection. How fun. And this Progress Keeper, an All Sorts Progress Keeper, but from myself. 
And the winner for that one is Faye Knits, who is Chelsea Rowley. Um, Faye Knits on Instagram. And you will contact me through my email, candyshopyarns at gmail.com. And we will send that out to you. So thank you so much for participating in that. And we hope that um, even with you not winning a prize, that you win at life. Yes, because. you do. You win at life. <laughs> One more quick note that we should have mentioned earlier. This is just an admin thing. Um, we are going to be, we have started, just barely, a Facebook group for our podcast. Um, it's a great place where we can moderate discussion and visit with each other. So if you would like to join us, it is a closed group, so you do have to request um, access to the group, but we would love to have you come over there. We will definitely be posting um, recent episodes and, and things like that in our Facebook group. So please come and join us there. And we also are going to be returning resurrecting. and resurrecting our website. So... Um, there will be show notes. The show notes often You're do. In charge of the I show am notes. in charge of the show notes <laughs> because of the way we do things. Just so you know, Deborah posts. She edits the videos and posts those. And then once that video is posted, then I go and I post all the show notes because that's just the easiest way we found to make that work. We don't sit work. down and write it all out beforehand. No. Otherwise, would never, ever do You this. know how rambly we are. It would be impossible. <laughs> yeah. So because of that, the show notes lag behind the release of the video. But if you're patient with us, those show notes will be there and um, we'll be posting some other things as well on our website. So we'd love to have you come to that. And it's just meanwhile at thecastle.com. So, just a couple of admin things. All right. I think that's everything, right? I think so. Let's get on with finished objects. I only have two. I so. have one. Well, that's exciting. I'm going to show this one. Sounds first. good. Oh, this, wait, I have two. You have two. I do. Yay. Yay. Good. I'm feeling really accomplished. This I forgot. is not blocked yet, but it's so pretty. You did. This was only a gleam in my eye last podcast. I was so excited to get started. This is the Love Notes sweater by Tin Can Knits. It, I knit it out of a strand of my classic sock in Opera Dancer's Daughter, held with a strand of my new fluff base, fantasy fluff base, which is a mohair silk base. So this is the yarn that I used for this sweater. Very, very pretty. Bases. And um, this, is the size this is a size large this is probably going to end up as Abby's <laughs> and I did it I did the regular length instead of the cropped length which is still pretty cropped mm -hmm. I completely knit it to the pattern it was speedy I think I knit this in a week. Said I knit one it in week, one week start to finish yes that's what it was one week start to finish and like I said it does still need to be blocked so this lace will just open up and lay so pretty but it is just a glorious cloudy fluffy dream of a sweater it's really interesting because it's knit you know with a it's basically a DK weight when you combine the fingering and the the mohair the lace weight mohair um, but you knit it on a size 10 needle which is a fairly loose gauge yeah, yeah. so you would think it would be really kind of sloppy but that mohair just fluffs up so much mm -hmm. and fills in so much that it's just it's very it's pretty. dreamy oh it's, it's just dreamy, dreamy. <laughs> it really is I love it and it's got a little bit of a high low hem the the I wish I should have had this on a hanger or something but the hem in the back is lower than in the front and it's just lovely. It was really fun to knit it. How much yarn did it take? To it knit took it? two skeins of each. So I don't remember the exact yardage. I did have some leftovers, but in this size large at the regular length, I believe it called for 850 yards. Now that's 850 yards of each of the yarns, of course, not total. Um, but yeah, and that's with this um, below the elbow sleeve which is kind of fun and blousey. I like mm -hmm. how, they, how that works. Um, so it is not a yarn eater. It doesn't take, you know, a ton of yarn. You could knit this in a DK weight yarn without the mohair, without the mohair, but oh, I just love the but mohair. But why when so you fun. could use the mohair? <laughs> so that's just really, that was so fun. I really enjoyed it. Again, it was very speedy and I like it. It's knit with a circular yoke. 
but then it still has a little bit of a raglan increase mm -hmm. to give it a nice shape to it. The one thing I wish it had was a, a was some neckline shaping. Oh, yeah. Because I really do prefer to not have a neck that comes clear up yeah. here, you know, but that still is high up on the back, so that does have some short row shaping in the back of the neck. Yeah. Um, but I think that's a minor issue, so. Very that's pretty. It's been really fun. Now that it's nice and warm. Yep, no time, to, no, no desire to wear it or to hold it. When we were camping, there was ice on the tent, and today... Sweating, sweating like crazy. So. 95 <laughs> degrees for the high today. <laughs> All right, I finished my on the road shawl, which has this has the this is the front there. That's so fun. I like this one. Nice Very and cute. bright and just fun, happy colors. I like happy colors. You can't tell considering what we're wearing today. <laughs> I know. That was not planned, by the way, the yellow. I know. I, I was going to send a memo, and I didn't need to. <laughs> so this is the On the Road Shawl I mentioned by Janina Kaleo. Um, she has a website, JaninaKaleoDesign.com, and you can get the pattern there. And this took not a lot of yarn. So this was essentially the equivalent of a single skein shawl, but I used two colors mm. because look how much I have left. Oh wow, that is <laughs> so. Um, this one is Lagoon. The colorway is Lagoon by Yarning Apart on her Yarning Basis Basics um, base, and I did measure how much I had left and I forgot, so I can't really tell you exactly if that really was the case that it was you know, the equivalent of a 100 gram skein. But this one is um, 80s Windbreaker by Sweet Tea Yarns on her Sweet Sock base. And those are so cute together. It's too. a nice size, really. I mean, really I did is. block it quite heavily because I wanted it to be... I think it's because of all this mesh, open. it opens up, you know, yeah. and so you just yeah. get more... So, I mean, it's a really good size. So, I mean, even if anything, it would be like a single skein and you could do a border of, mm -hmm. of some other one if you wanted to do it all in one color or something. But, um, I don't know, I have, I still have enough to do a pair of socks with this. So. For sure. So that was good. There's my first so one. So cute. It was like my for sure? That was for in, sure. That was in a reference to the 80s Windbreaker. Oh, okay. For sure. Good. I was trying to think if there were any notes that I needed to say on here about it but no it was pretty easy pretty Cute. simple to knit and I like that there was um, a little bit of mindlessness to it and then times where I had to think and then mindlessness and times where I had to think so I could take it with me to work on it while I was visiting with other people or doing something else for parts of it so I like that that is a good combination all right, All right, here's my have? other finished object, which is this pair of socks. These are just plain vanilla socks. I don't love this yarn. I knit these socks because I realized I was leaving to go see a movie. And I grabbed yarn that was already caked up. Yeah. <laughs> and it was like, what's already caked up? This is Hedgehog Fibers in the Genie colorway, but it's their BFL sock base. Whatever, I think that's Hedgehog Twist maybe. Um, but it's, it's got BFL in it, a BFL nylon blend. Um, and it's, it, these aren't blocked again yet. I don't know what it is with me in blocking lately. I just kind of am like, eh, don't yeah. want to, but most of the time I don't have a problem with that. But, um, so I'm hoping some of the stitches I usually find because oh, I'm, I'm rambling because it's kind of a grabbier, woolier type of more rustic feel to the yarn. I find that it's. The stitches as you're knitting them don't lay quite as tidy and so on. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have a, as nice of a hand to it. It doesn't feel as nice in your hands. I'm guessing they're going to be very um, strong and hard wearing as I know BFL is. But I just didn't enjoy it as much. But I sure knit them really fast. So And they're cute. I like and them. And they're cute. I like so. the colorway. And I've got another pair of socks to add to my either my gift pile or my drawer. One or the other. But those were fun. I mean, knitting them was fun still. I still enjoy them. 
enjoy the knitting of it. Yes. Just not my favorite ones I've ever made. I actually do like for movie knitting, do, <laughs> knitting socks for my husband because he likes the same color and I get bored of that. So I'm like, well, if I knit it in the dark, I don't know what color it is, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> so That's a good idea. I tend to reserve his socks for my movie knitting. That's a good idea. <laughs> Unless I'm like, oh, I really like it, but it mm -hmm. just depends. Whatever is available at the time that's it's all true. stuck in it, that's what I take. Yep. All right, next up is a sewing project. So I am friends with Amy, who's Little Taylor S on Instagram, and uh, she has a website. And anyways, she has been making beautiful, beautiful things. She always makes beautiful things, but she specifically is. sleepwear and loungewear. And she makes things that I feel are more luxury items that I tend to go for practicality because I, that's just me. And I decided the other day that I need things to sleep in that make me feel pampered and luxurious. So I don't know why I feel like this does it for me, but these, I made myself some pants. And what makes me laugh is because we have a lot of friends who are in the UK. Anytime I say pants now, <laughs> They're not pants. I know what they're thinking. <laughs> I know what you're all thinking. But in the U.S., pants are different. <laughs> Pajama pants, I'm going to say it a million times. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so, anyways, I like this fabric because it's 100% cotton, and it's really, really lightweight, almost. It's like a semi-sheer, kind of, just because I wanted something so lightweight in the heat here. Mm -hmm. And I put pockets in it, even though I really don't store things in my pockets while I'm sleeping but I mean come on if I'm doing something that's not just practicality then I'll add pockets where I don't need them and I ignore the pockets when I do <laughs> and then I took some fabric and did a band around the bottom and put a cute little pom-pom trim and I was too lazy to pre-wash this fabric but I know with this type of fabric that it actually shrinks quite a bit um, this right, direction guys. this direction up and down it gets shorter and doing this band around the bottom means that it would actually shrink this way so I sewed the band on with a slightly wider piece than the leg opening knowing that it would shrink in and I feel like after washing it that it's evened out pretty good this is quite a wide leg this this is an oversized pair of pajama pants that's for all of you friends. What what <laughs> bottoms? What do you call them if they're not trousers? Do you have trou bed bed trousers? I don't, I don't bed know. Bed slacks. The <laughs> things that make us laugh. So, anyways, I didn't mean to make these so oversized, but it's perfect for sleeping. Um, this is a simplicity pattern 3796, and I did view A, and I don't even know how old this pattern is. I made it years ago. And I couldn't remember how it fit, so I just measured and went off of their measurements, and I could have gone down two sizes. Oh, so but it's nice. Roomy. It's a wide. It's nice and roomy and cozy. And after Thanksgiving, they'll still fit. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, and I also like the detail on the back with the seam. It doesn't really change the shape of how it fits because. It, it just doesn't. It doesn't change the shape of how it fits, but it just gives it another element of fun, along with the little ruffle on the top and the drawstring. So I liked that one. Very nice. And I have more fabric to make more pajama pants. And I like this fabric so much that I kept every little scrap, and I made myself, I had just enough to make a little drawstring pouch, and it has a little pocket inside. And it could be a knitting bag, but instead I think it's going to be my, um, I'll hold my cables and cords and everything when oh, we travel for all of our electronics because I always need something. So that's a great idea. That's Two wonderful. For one. Wonderful, wonderful. All right. Let's see. Works in that, progress. That okay. Gotta move things over I know. There. We're, we're piled a little high here with all of our stuff. Okay. So works in progress. Oh goodness. Okay. I just have I don't have that many because I've been working all on one. Well, I want to show this. Okay. So I have in my new studio, 
there's a spot in on my wall where we have access to the circuit breaker box which you know is just a lovely beautiful metal door on the wall and I wanted something to cover it up but that was still accessible mm -hmm. so I decided I was gonna make myself one of these kind of bohemian looking wall hangings so this is what I have so far it's not okay. done but this is what it looks like so far very nice and I didn't have a pattern I made this oh, up really? I looked at a bunch of pictures of other ones that people made and I just went for it and I crocheted it in about a day and a half I am nice. going to be adding um, you know a branch or a small dowel or something across the top with some tassels that will hang down on the say, sides. What about the tassels? And I'm going to add a V of fringe at the bottom. That sounds good. So that's still coming. I made this here to give you a closer texture. I made this out of the Bernat Maker Home Deck mm -hmm. yarn that we crocheted our bags out of last year or the year before, yeah. or whenever that was. And um, that's what I made it out of. And it's just double crochet, single crochet clusters that I made here. These little baubles are made out of, you know, five double crochets and then kind of almost like a, the fillet crochet kind of a, a look here with the... Once our sister Catherine sees this finished. She's going to love it. She's going to want one. This was so fun to make. I mean, it did make my hand a little tired, especially because I crocheted it really fast. So mm -hmm. I did a lot on it. Um, but I'm really excited. Yeah, that's that, cute. <laughs> My studio is already painted the color, I mean, leaving the pink, pink color that my daughter had had when it was her bedroom. What was that? So it's very blue. <laughs> it's, I'm oh, trying yeah, to look yeah, and see. Yeah. It's, it's almost the blue of your shawl. Like, it's that color. <laughs> so it's, it's really cute. It's just a lot of blue. And so I want to bring lots of elements in that are white and natural to kind of... Mm -hmm. slice it up a little bit and uh -huh. not be too blue but I do love the color so I think this will be one thing that will help and it will serve the purpose of covering up my ugly um, circuit breaker box and yet you can still you know get to it just by moving it easily so anyway good job that's what I, I like your design thank you I like it too I'm excited about it did you just do that as you went or did you like chart it out? I didn't chart it out. I mean, I knew the elements that I wanted. I knew I wanted the diamond pattern. I wasn't sure exactly what kind of diamond pattern, um, but I knew I wanted at least, you know, kind of a central element and two side elements. Mm -hmm. um, I knew I wanted a lot of texture in it, but I also didn't want it so busy. I think I've seen a lot of them and they're really cute, but they're just, you know, they've got tons of tons of different textures, like all woven in. Oh, yeah. yeah together and um i got a hair on my face and um and that wasn't quite what i was looking for so i just i literally made it up and by the time i got to about right here i knew what i was doing i mean oh. I, I knew i was doing this diamond and i figured out the rest and it's asymmetrical top to bottom or i mean it's yeah. symmetrical top to bottom so you Once know you get to the midway point you just go to here and then you repeat <laughs> in reverse so yeah anyway i thought it turned out really nice good all right I have been knitting socks surprise that is a surprise that isn't a surprise oh those are fun I knit one sock um, from it's way over there it's too far I can't do it um, <laughs> from my festival fizz colorway um, yeah they're plain stockinette stitch. I used a marshmallow gumball mini and marshmallow is just the name that I've given my undyed yarn. So anytime you see marshmallow in anything it's just undyed. And I knit this one toe up and I followed Jules toe, beanie toe. I'm trying to remember to say the right thing because I realized I said the wrong thing last time. Her beanie toe pattern from her, her soul sister socks and then I just did plain stockinette and I used her gusset, no, go day heel. Yes, that's what I did. So that I could use um, 25 grams exactly of yarn for the foot and the leg. And then I just stopped when I 
got 25 grams, then did the cuff. There you go. So I have another one to go. That's all the excitement there. <laughs> <laughs> I like, after you've talked about vanilla socks for some, you're know, like, what, what do you have to say? <laughs> Other than I really like the colorway, which I hope I do because. Because you dyed I it. I dyed it. And it's if I really did it, cute. that would be sad. <laughs> it's fun and bright. Okay. All right, so I am working on another pair of socks as well. These are little shorties, and they are little. In fact, they're so little, I'll probably go back and take out this toe and make it a little longer. Because I knit them for my daughter, and she put them on, and they're too little for and her. And her feet are not as little as you remember? are almost the same size as mine now, even though she's 11. Really? So she has the biggest happen? feet. She's just going to be tall like Aria and yep. I are. Yep. So I got this one done, but like I said, I'll probably go pull the toe out and lengthen this one. But I'm going to wait until after I finish this second one. And so um, this is where I am on it. It's gone this long. And this yarn is from Dragon Horde Yarn. And I have had it for quite a while and I've misplaced the label. And I'm really sad about it because I want to see what this base is. I love this base, feel it. It's just, yeah, it's so is... smooth. Yeah, It's just very, very smooth. It's very enjoyable to knit with. And I don't remember the colorway name either because of that, but I just love yeah. it. It's so pretty. So Tristan, if you're watching, I'd love to know what this colorway name is. It's gorgeous or anybody else who knows Tristan's beautiful yarn. So anyway, that's what I'm working on and it's really fun. And again, this was one where I had this yarn balled up already and I'm excited to use it. And um, we were going, we've gone to several movies recently. So in fact, this last week, um, my, you know, Ari is on her mission, Ethan's working um, and Isaac was at scout camp for a whole week. And so Abby and I, we did a lot of fun stuff this yeah. last week, which was really nice. And we went and saw two movies during the week. So that's where I knit pretty much this entire foot in one movie. <laughs> so. Yeah, we went and saw Toy Story 4. Mm -hmm. last week. And it was cute. It was cute. It was really cute. And then we saw Endgame again. And so three plus hours of a movie, you can get a lot of knitting done. Yes, you can. You can. Yep. Um, this makes me laugh because speaking of movie knitting, not actually movie knitting, but <laughs> when you need a project really fast on the go, yes, Emily was over here. Oh, that's right. What were we doing? I don't remember um, where we were going. Wait, we went to, we were going to go to the gardens, the garden. Oh, that's right. And then we were going to go to Gardner Village. Yeah. And then we ended up only doing Gardner Village. Yeah, but. we only did one. But Emily was panicking all of a sudden like I don't have a project and I'm like guess what I have one for you I'm like I wanted to cast on a sock with this yarn this is the yarn it is also by Dragon Horde yarn and by the way well I'll tell you the story of this cake of yarn in a minute but this one is um, rewrite the stars on lower fingering weight base by Dragon Horde yarn and so I had the skein out and I'm like, let's just hurry and wind it. So we put it on the Swift and we started winding and winding and winding and we pulled it off and the bottom was like hanging like a jellyfish. Oh, no. And I'm like, what are we going to do? I was like, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. I'll just take it. Let's go. And so, so she started knitting. She cast on and she knit the cuff for me. And then I knit the foot or the rest of it. And this is um, French meringue sock. socks by Vanilla Wool. And I knit a pair of these for my mother for Christmas, but I wanted to knit a pair for myself. I don't have this on here straight because this side has very little of the pattern. This side has almost all of it. <laughs> That's okay. Um, so I knit that for me, but when I was getting down part way, I was having problems because I could not untangle oh, the jellyfish. No. <laughs> so I spent an hour, but I was in I was in bed and I didn't want to get up and and go and do what would have made it easier, which would have been take the inside out and wind it. The, anyways, <laughs> I have to get out of bed and I didn't want to do that. <laughs> and I didn't have anything to wind it around and I did And so this I wound by hand. Look how beautiful That's it is. That's a beautiful It's a work kit. of art. I had nothing with me but my thumb and I was like, and I don't remember how everybody did it, but I watched something somewhere. I'm gonna try and remember. <laughs> I, I think I saw um, Danny, Little Bobbins, talking about yeah. winding cakes like this on your thumb. 
So I've actually pretty. been so proud of myself that I almost haven't wanted to use it because it looked so pretty. <laughs> it still looks pretty, but it looked even prettier before. It looks better as a sock though. I'm just gonna say <laughs> it looks better as a sock, but the cake of yarn is also a work of art. So <laughs> that was, and I, I finished the first sock and I've got the little baby start to the second sock. Yay. There you go. That's awesome. Okay. Okay, I'm so excited to share this with you guys. I am so close, you guys. Look Snag what is... Oh, this is so hard to show because it's gotten large. Sorry, I don't want to grab anything yet. Okay. I, grabbed my, I snagged my nail and it's going to catch on everything now. Uh-oh. Okay. Okay, so help me hold this up. And there's a bajillion like progress. Jewelry. I know. But look... First of <laughs> I will explain that in a minute. But look at what I've got done. I've got my pockets in. They look so good. Here's the inside. It's the hem is done and I am just working on the sleeves. Make a statement and keep these on. <laughs> okay, so the, my method when I'm knitting sleeves because you know, like I love the idea of you just perfectly do all the decreases every so many rows or whatever, but let's be honest, sometimes you forgot to do it that row and instead of undoing it, you just do them the next row. <laughs> so these are marking all my decreases. So I leave them on the sleeve and then I come over here and as I'm knitting this sleeve, I keep track. And when I get to the next point of the decrease, I move the progress keeper from here to here. Mm -hmm. So that by the end, I know I have two exactly matching sleeves. That's fun. That's a good, good so, tip. I also like that half of these are ones that I've made. They are. <laughs> and listen, it's very jingly and clickety clackety and I really enjoy that clicky noise. <laughs> That's fun. I am way excited. So, I mean. Keep it on, Emily. Keep them on. <laughs> I'm just putting half of it on because honestly, it I'm so dying. Hot. It's so hot. I know. But it's that's the length that the sleeves are right now. And I think that they're going to grow a little bit. I mean, they for sure will. This yeah, is a super, super wash, wash and so many cables that haven't been blocked yet. So it's going to get bigger. But yeah, it'll probably grow 10%. But I'm excited to wear this when it's not 95 degrees. Oh. <laughs> but I, you guys, I'm so proud of this. I think this is my masterpiece so it far. Is. And for those of you who may not know, this is the All of the Lights cardigan patterned by Hohe Locatelli. I love how you can get Hohe's patterns in lots of places, including on her own website. And um, she's just wonderful. So I love her designs. And I love this sweater. And I thought I was gonna give up on it a few times, but I I'm just glad you persevered. love it. And I'm almost there. <laughs> I will finish, I'll have it finished before we podcast next. So yeah, I'm it's excited beautiful. about that. Beautiful. Yep. Puts us all to shame. No, absolutely <laughs> not. Just kidding. Okay, next pair of socks. Because I'm doing socks. Let's see what I can move. I'm knitting a pair of socks for my husband in the color blue <laughs> <laughs> what a surprise it's actually I like this one I, I've liked all of them that I have knit for him um, the only one I didn't like is the one he knit for himself and so it's good he knit them not me I didn't care for that colorway um, he we were at Great Basin Fiber Arts Fair and I had him go pick out a skein of yarn that he liked and I just misplaced I remember I put it in a different bag accidentally what are you looking for the label for it oh. that has the colorway I put it in the wrong bag I was just remembering it is a dragon horde yarn um, oh I remember dragon horde yarn shepherdess base when I kiss the teacher I remembered. that's the colorway is when I kiss there the teacher go. and it's a BFL base and I'm knitting it larger and my husband says that they still fit, even though they're not compression socks, so that's a good thing. <laughs> I just hope I have enough yarn. See, I should have done toe up for that reason, but I, I prefer cuff down so much more. So You can always do a contrast for yeah, like a longer toe. So I can if I need to. I'll measure as I go along, make sure I don't knit more than 50 grams, and then I will, if I need to do a contrasting one for the toe, I will do that. But I would like them to all be the same yarn, if possible, because mm -hmm. I think he prefers that as well. And this one's just a plain stockinette vanilla sock. 
I did 68 stitches and this is how I knit the decreases um, for here let's turn it this way for the gusset when when I switch I did the heel flap the heel turn I picked up stitches and now I'm going to be knitting the foot and doing um, the gusset decreases when I do that I switch my needles Emily and I both showed this before mm -hmm. to instead of going this direction on my project I knit around and move stitches around until it's going this direction and so I decrease where my stitch marker is there mm -hmm. and, and I do that differently yeah you do mm -hmm. um, we've just both shown how we do things yeah. a little bit differently though, because otherwise would have a million stitches for the heel and it would pull and stretch out of place yeah. and so I turn it this way and then once I finish those decreases then I switch it back to going this direction so that made sense and if it didn't <laughs> I don't know That's okay. it made sense to me okay. okay so I'm excited at Christmas time Deborah gave me a gift now first of all I I'm not ready to show mine yet then you show that. Sorry. We have to do this. We have to do this the right way. We have to do so it it's okay. together. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. I just ruined everything. I did everything. I ruined everything. <laughs> everything. I, I'm used to it, though. <laughs> so growing up, the catchphrase in our family was, Deborah did it. Yep. And my dad said, usually, um, I, don't, I don't remember what it was. Oh, Amelia is the one if that... If there is a fight... Then Emily was crying because Amelia hit her and Deborah caused it. Yeah. yeah. So, as always, Deborah did it and I've just learned that. Okay, this is the Agrumi, I forgot to review the pronunciation, shawl, which is citrus in French and obviously I don't speak French, by Christelle, wait, Christelle Niul. There you go. It's a semicircular shawl, it's beautiful. And it uses a strand of fingering weight yarn with a lace weight mohair. So pretty. The alternates. And I had just cast it on last time. I had done this much down to this progress keeper last time. And now I have finished the initial striping section and I'm on to the lace portion along the bottom. And this, the colorways I'm using, this one is called Rock Candy. This is my own candy shop yarns, and this one is Lime um, Cotton Candy, which is also my own candy shop yarns. And patterns, very simple, very easy to follow. I like it that it all fits on two pages. I think there's a third page, which is the front page with a big picture that I didn't print. Nice. Maybe there's four. I don't know. But all I needed was on two pages, so that was good. You know what I love about knitting when you alternate mohair and knitting? I don't know if you can see. I'm gonna try That's and the get back this. Side. I know I'm doing okay. that on purpose. You can it's almost like you have x-ray vision. You yeah. get to see what the inside of a knit stitch looks yeah. like. It's really cool because it almost looks like that stitch shouldn't hold the way it does. Yeah, that's true. Anyway, it's really fun to look at. And this has garter ridges with the regular fingering weight yarn. And then the um, mohair is stockinette. And so it gives you some texture on the front while the back is nice and smooth. So it's kind nice. of fun. Nice. That's very fun. That's cute. I like this one. I'm excited to finish it. Pretty. It'll be too hot to wear it for a while, but I still like knitting it. But we will be all stocked up for the fall. Yes. Okay, I'm sorry that I interrupted. That's okay. I'll forgive you. By the way, I have to show you my cute cup. Look at this. Isn't that fun? I'm trying to get my... I can't see because it says no drama llama. Yeah. Anyway, I just thought that was cute. I use it for ice. Ice water. All right, now okay. I will show you. Thanks. Thanks for... Did I do it? Am I doing it right now? Yes. Okay, You're good. doing a good job, Emily, <laughs> and this is the time. So Deborah knows that I love to collect vintage tins. Not just tins in general, because... There's a million of them, but vintage tins that are, especially the busier and the more Victorian or floral looking, the better. <laughs> so this was a gift for me for Christmas from Deborah, And in it, she gave me a kit, a cross stitch kit. And I think I've showed this before, but I had just barely started it. And I then I had to have her 
pull it all back out. I have not cross stitched before, but look at how good I'm doing. Good job. Isn't Yay. that cute? We need some cheering for Emily. <laughs> here is the picture of what I am making. Just keep holding that there because I have to come over here. Okay. Okay. I'm blocking Deborah. Okay. Okay. Go. okay. It is Country Cottage Needleworks Forest Deer. And all I have left so far, there's some little French knots that need to go on these mushrooms for the little white spots and then the centers of my flowers because they all need yellow centers and then there's just a border that goes around mm -hmm. the whole thing and then I will have done it and it's taken me forever. Good job. Good it, job. I, I've gotten much faster. I mean I think like the first time I did it it took me two days to just crochet or to crochet <laughs> to cross stitch the grass and then it took me like a week to do the tree and then it took me like a two days to do this one and then like 30 minutes to do this thing of flowers. Does that make sense? Like it, it just has gotten a lot faster. I'm very, very slow at it. It's just gotten more comfortable, I think. But I think also as the farther you get into something, you have more reference points. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's easier to figure out where you need to, yeah. to start and stop. But I definitely am enjoying it now. It's not, doesn't scratch that same itch that knitting does by yeah. any stretch of the imagination. Um, but very enjoyable and I have my next project already oh, planned. You're going to do more? But I will talk about it when we do snippets from the past. Okay. But look at my pretty tin. Isn't it lovely? It's so pretty. I love it. So I have been cross stitching now for like a year and a half. I'm pretty much a pro. <laughs> Not really. But... I have the kind of the same thing. I like cross stitching, but I don't feel that it's relaxing at all. Mm. <laughs> it's, it's enjoyable. For it sure. is enjoyable, yeah. but I have to focus. Like when people are like, oh, it's just an on the go thing. I'm like, I do not understand this. What you're talking about. This is a foreign <laughs> language to me because I have to like sit there and count every single, like it's mm. counted cross stitch <laughs> and counting was never my strong suit. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, I have been working on things very slowly, but I thought I'd give you an update. So I am stitching the Welcome to the Forest series as well by Country Cottage Needleworks. And this is, um, you can do it in several ways. This is a banner that can go across the top and then underneath you can nestle six other charts and it will make a grid like that. I am doing mine differently. I am stitching them all on one piece of fabric in a completely random and different order and then I will be separating them to make a pennant banner. Oh, that'll be fun. Like a bunting? Yeah, yes, like a bunting. That's mm -hmm. what I... And so here is the Welcome to the Forest chart and this Cute. is on some Monaco that I dyed with Rit dyes. And I picked out some different colorways so that they would stand out a little bit more on the fabric that I was using. Mm -hmm. And I've all, this was the first one that I did. Cute. And the second one, and I'm starting the, I'm starting another one down here. I'm actually not going to stitch all of them. I decided I'm going to do five instead of seven. Primarily, Which means you'll have a sixth one that you'll pass on to me? Primarily, well, I'm not gonna <laughs> stitch them on here, but I, oh, you're welcome yeah. to stitch from them. That's but primarily true. because of the fact that I started on this fabric without really paying attention to how much fabric I had, and I don't have enough room oh, to stitch them yeah. all. And I did not leave three inches between them all because of how I'm planning on finishing them. <laughs> if I ever finish them. That's the <laughs> You will. That's the thing to remember. I may not actually finish them at the rate that I'm going. <laughs> I was like, oh, if I start this now, I'll have it done in time for spring. Well, spring has come and gone, <laughs> and I'm starting the third of seven charts and switched my mind, changed my mind to doing only five. So it'll be perfect for next spring. <laughs> okay. um, I finished this one quite a while ago. I haven't shown it on here at all, That's but cute. this is. Uh, I also dyed this fabric using Rit dye, and the chart is a Lizzie Kate Tiny Tidings 21. And I just pulled out whatever threads that I had. Wait, maybe I did show this one. I don't remember, but I don't know. that doesn't actually mean anything. I have no idea, no clue whatsoever, but I'm showing it to you now. Okay, 
and I won't show that one, but I'll show this one because this is one that I'm really proud of. This is one where I had to hunt and hunt and hunt to find this pattern. It's on Pinterest, but Pinterest people steal things all the mm -hmm. time and it's not ethical. Right. And so I want to make sure that I craft ethically. So <laughs> I finally tracked down the only copy I could find um, for this one pattern <laughs> or for this one chart. And I can't even show it to you because they don't have anything but the chart in here. You can't see like things like a mock-up of yeah. them. So it's just the pattern. So um, anyways, I found it in here. I think I purchased it on eBay and I'll show you which one it is. I have a needle minder on there, but that's so cute. I'm getting there slowly. This is the one that makes my brain hurt. Book. It makes my brain hurt so much because of this flowery, it's kind of like a heart border around it that I have to count way too much <laughs> and pay way too close attention, but it's really pretty. I have no idea what I'm doing with any of these, but I'm making them because I want, I need to make them. So this need. entire book is about cats. Yes. Here's oh. the funny thing. <laughs> I'm allergic to cats. So the only way to enjoy cats is digitally or on cross stitch. We call Deborah a digital cat hoarder. <laughs> I'm a digital cat hoarder. <laughs> My husband hates cats. <laughs> I don't care one way or another necessarily, probably because I'm allergic, so I can't really be exposed to them enough to think that they're the best thing in the world, but I think they're cute as can be. So I have <laughs> stitched a cat here, and I have an entire book based on cats, and this is the only chart that I will be stitching from it. Well, once you enjoy it, maybe you'll want to pass the book on to yeah. somebody else. So That's lovely, though. There it's so cute. There is another one that I have been stitching and I use a combination of DMC as well as other flosses like um, all of a sudden I can't remember any of the Weeks Dye Works what are some of the other ones anyways what people have toined, <laughs> coined fancy floss mm. um, I use a combination of them I even though I've done this cross stitch this this whole almost one cross stitch I haven't watched really almost any tutorials or videos or anything. I have this terrifying suspicion that it would be a slippery slope yes. and that once I put my toe over the edge, it would just be whoosh from there. Yes. And so I'm sure there's all kinds of things that I do that aren't like the right way, but you know how I feel about that. I think I've talked about that before, about the right way to crochet yeah. or the right way to knit. Yep. So same thing. One more thing I wanted to talk about really quickly. I decided um, recently that I wanted to increase my library, my knitting library, when it comes to printed materials. I know I rely way too much on digital materials and I, there's something so beautiful about holding a book. Mm -hmm. And I have like hardly anything. I think I have like three interweave magazines, the Japanese Stitch Bible, and one pom-pom. That's what I have in print. Like, that's it. I mean, other than things I've printed off. And so I always admired the interpretations collections by Hohi Locatelli and Vera, Vera Valamaki. And this most recent one, while color-wise, is not something that you would think of for me. The styles in it are just stunning. Great and thing is, you get to pick exactly. your own colors. Exactly. And there's just some beautiful, beautiful um, projects in here. Um, in addition, I love the writing in this one. Um, I love the idea of it that they take, they each take a few words and then they take one word and they each design something um, inspired by that word. And mm -hmm. so there's some beautiful writing. So I've added this one to my collection. I will try and track down as many of the back ones as I can of this. They're not all available easily, but um, some of them still are. But I would love your recommendations for your favorite printed knitting books, especially if there's something that includes um, good writing, beautiful photographs, and inclusive sizing. That's really important to me. Um, that's one of the reasons I went straight to this one because I know especially Hohi, I don't know as much about Vera Valamaki. She may be just as great. 
um, but I know that Hohi Locatelli is very good at her sizing and so I knew I could trust this but um, I'd love your recommendations because I do want to add to my printed library and this is fun just looking through it makes me happy anyway well and it's also pretty much all black and white or gray and white um, designs which I think is really great because it makes it seem like grayscale where you can just substitute your own yeah. picture of what you want easily because a lot of times you see things knit in very specific colors and it's hard to imagine it in any other way but with this type of um, color scheme, color palette, it makes it really easy. Which for is you very to do that. standard Hohi Locatelli kind of color palette yeah, too. Yeah. Which <laughs> but like I look also at this, really the like resolute too. wrap. I mean, that wrap. I mean, it is just stunning lace work. Beautiful, just gorgeous. Yeah. Anyway, I'm excited about this. All right, so it is now time for us to move on to our snippets from the past segment. All right, today we have some lots of things to show you because recently um, I went to my uncle's house, my my our, our. <laughs> uncle, um, Uncle Don. He was a photographer for the Utah Jazz for years. He's the sweetest person. Yeah, for the Deseret News, he was a, worked as a photographer for the Deseret News too. Yes, yeah, so yes. like our local newspaper and. Um, but also, he was our Aunt Jerry's husband, and he contacted me and asked if I wanted to go over to her house because to look through all of her crafting supplies. She passed away recently, and she is the one who taught me how to knit when I was young. And my, our, our uncle, it's okay, I'm not offended. They he know. wanted, <laughs> he just knew that Emily and I liked crafting and different things like that and he wanted somebody who would appreciate it to go and look through the things. So Emily couldn't go um, but I could and I brought back some things that I thought that she might appreciate and we thought we'd just show you some of the things and maybe share a little bit of memories along the way. First of all I wanted to show you um, this is one item that my aunt, oh I have to take this off here, that my aunt knit. I don't know anything about it at all and the collar needs to be folded oh, this down. Is so, this is so Jerry. This is. Um, <laughs> smells just like her, huh? <laughs> so, oh my, gosh. my uncle, our uncle, <laughs> he pulled this out. It was interesting. As we were looking through things, he'd pull something out and just tell us a little bit about it. And he just was, you know, just watching as I went through some things. And my sister, another sister, was there with me. Um, and then every once in a while he'd pull something out and he'd get really emotional about it. And this was one he was very emotional about. And he just was very proud of her work. So um, I have it with me because he took it to get it dry cleaned because it has a stain on it. And it didn't come out. And I said, really, I'll, I'm going to just take it home and hand wash it and lay it flat and block it. Um, it seems like it is primarily a cotton and rayon mm -hmm. blend to me. Mm -hmm. That's what it seems like. And she would like. have worn this over a blouse of some sort. She usually wore yeah. some kind of a, a pretty simple, you know, maybe cotton or even polyester kind of blouse yeah. under it. So that's the sweater that she has knit here. That's so you're taking this back to him? Yep, I okay. just need to, I need to wash it now and lay it flat and block it and then I can take it back to him. But he, I guess he didn't keep most of the things. She didn't keep everything either because mm -hmm. she predominantly made for other people. So yeah, um, this is the one that he kept. That's beautiful. So I'd love to know what that pattern is. That's I very know. pretty. So along with that, I have one of, he says, you won't care about any of her projects that she's been working on. Nobody needs that. We're just going to get rid of it. I'm like, no, I want to see what was she working on. So here is one of her knitting baskets and in here oh my goodness <laughs> I couldn't find the pattern oh, and there was not any more yarn but the yarn that she was using let me just it's hard let's see if we can even just pull it up how she has it connected together made in France fluffy imported unger I don't know 
These are the yarns she's using. They're, it's very, very rustic wool and a, a acrylic boucle. Is this a wool? Yeah. This one is a wool and viscose oh, blend. Oh yeah, and it's a boucle yarn. It's, yeah, yeah and, then, and then this acrylic is, is just, a, just an acrylic. And she was holding it double. And I don't even know what the stitch is because the boucle makes it hard to tell. I'm not sure what she hole. was making. Well, there's armhole shaping. This is like oh, the right back there. of a sweater. Yeah. I bet this was for Uncle Don. Probably. So. It might have been for her, though. I mean, it's not too far off from this. That's true. That. It could have been. So. I'm this, wondering what this was to mark. She's got a little piece of yarn. Yeah, that she was marking. And that's the only here. one. So it's not symmetrical. It's not yeah. on the other side either. So, so it, it might be an error drop. or a drop stitch or something that she was holding on to. It's hard to see with the boucle. Yeah. But there was there wasn't a pattern anywhere or extra yarn to really know what it was that she was making. Mm -hmm. But it was just kind of fun to see what That's she put fun. together and it is not cozy or soft it's in not. any it's way. It's really not pleasant. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> But this is one. I had lots of fun with Emily going through some of the pictures from this book. Oh, yes. Which is where this next project comes from. So this is one that there's not more yarn for, for the sleeves. The pattern is in there, but this could just be a vest. I could just seam up the sides. You totally could. Is it this? I think it's this pattern, isn't it? Yeah. We have to see what the name of that one is. Oh, I think this is the pattern for that, or something similar. No, that's that not the one. one. It could be oh, one like it's that. Similar to but that. But it does one. look very similar. Wait, that's not the one for this. This one is it? No, I found it in there somewhere. Oh, I'll have okay. To, I think it's this one right here. Cause she she bought the exact yarn for it. It's the exact same yarn. It is that one. That one. So it's supposed to have short sleeves. So I could just seam up the side and seam up this right center here. ribbing. That's the one. And it could be done and then we could offer it to a good home on our new Facebook group because it won't, you know, we have no need of it. It won't fit any of us. It looks like it's kind of a, again, I don't know what, cotton visco yeah. or cotton rayon something with some eyelash. It's kind of fun fabric. It is that kind it of fun. Creates. I don't know, but it's. That is fun. I just, I was just thinking, all of that work. Yes. It needs to at least be finished in a usable form, if possible. So then there's one more here. Oh wait, in here though, we had to show my favorite. Okay. Okay. Let's see if I can find. It. There are some good ones. Oh, <laughs> that one, yeah. Okay, let me find it. It it was it was a good one that I sent Emily a picture of. Oh, maybe it was in the other book. Uh, yeah, this one isn't too bad. It's mostly things that could be made wearable. This one. I know there's some kind of cute, cute stuff. That one. Um, actually, I think it is in here. Just be patient because it was really good. It's worth the wait. Well, do you remember the pictures? No, that I, I don't. Sent? I don't remember right now. Okay, we'll just show those two. Okay, those well, so pretty. here, look at this one. That's pretty fun. And then look at that. That's cute. And I like, actually, I hate the shorts, but I like the tank on the front with that lace trim. Made longer. Yeah, those are the shorts. The quilted shorts. The remember? quilted shorts. But there was another view of it. Okay. Yeah. Then the last project was from Sensational Knit. And it is view five right here. And it is completely done except for attaching. Here, let me show you how this went together. This is the front. So hold that there. This is the top? That's the front. Okay. This is the back. And then the sleeve, the oh, shoulders okay. get connected there. And then you pick, um, you pick up. Just stitches. It's on a cable. Actually, I don't need to pick oh, up. Okay. It's on a cable. And then I do the ribbing. I'm trying to remember the order. I went and looked at it. And ribbing there, seam up, and do some ribbing on the sleeves. There is enough yarn to finish that one. And that one is... I feel like this has to be finished. Yeah. 
That one is the, it's a cotton, 100% cotton. She was always hot, so she didn't like always to. I'm really surprised hot. at that wool. That, yeah. that That's other what I was thinking, not for her. Yeah, I think you're probably right that it wasn't for her because. But this is actually a really pretty this is very color pretty. and pretty design. So That's cute. I'm going to show you the design again. This one. So That's I need fun. to finish that. I need to finish it for her so that her hard work will not be wasted there. She had a lot of other unfinished projects, but like all of us. <laughs> yeah. And she didn't really work on any of them for years because she had lupus and yeah. she was just in a lot of pain and she, her life after, I mean, she spent so much of her time serving others and doing other things like that and then she was really just in, on her couch or in bed a lot after that and so she watched her stories and knit or crocheted and made things for people but after a while she couldn't even do that so yeah the wonderful thing about about seeing projects like this and and looking through it just makes you feel so connected to her again you know like you just yeah, it helps you to remember all the fun things and the good times. Oh, there's, yeah, there's the quilted shorts. Sorry, Sorry found the good it. times. Found it. Everybody needs a pair of quilted shorts that Especially are too small. Especially ones that fit like that. <laughs> what? That's comfortable. It seems very you know, breathable. Because you know if it's very hot, so you need shorts, that you should quilt them. Yes. And make them out of polyester. Yes. This makes sense <laughs> to me. Oh, there's too many. This is this is one of my favorite things. Oh, this, this is the is, other this one. This is the good one. Everybody remembers this, don't you? Not everybody. It was like 1986 Not everybody, or something. Not everybody, but a lot of us will remember this style. The funny thing about it. this is that, like, if you just took this picture, this so reminds me of our cousin Gina, yep. which her is daughter. her daughter Gina. Yeah. Oh, fun. So some of the other fun things that she had, she was the one who taught um, taught you how to knit. Yes. I never learned to knit at that time, but I did go to the yarn stores with her and things like that. But I didn't realize how much um, cross stitch she did as well. I, had no, I had no idea. idea. And that's what she, she had. She entered her cross stitch and embroidery in fairs and won blue ribbons for them. I had no idea. She was probably more obsessed yes. with that than she was with knitting, which is probably because understand. she was always hot. Yeah, <laughs> she really was. I mean, I think that's yeah. part of the lupus too. Yeah. Is she would just so. I mean, she would carry a fan with her everywhere. And we've had the air going all this time. Oh, I hope it's not too loud. Because we're really hot. It's. I. I I'm, hope. Be, I'm, be patient with us. We're not turning. Yeah, yeah it's it's pretty hot. So <laughs> I just all of a sudden it. Yes. I just realized everybody will have suddenly heard all the noise from the. Yeah. The apologies from on the that. Air conditioning. But. Deborah brought home so many different crochet, or I keep saying crochet, cross stitch kits and um, projects and things from from Jerry. She had mm -hmm. hundreds and hundreds of them, and I pretty much just brought home the kits. I didn't bring home all of the charts and everything. Mm -hmm. There were just so many. There's just no way. Too many. Yeah. Yeah. So, you want to show so some? well, first of all, um, one of the things that we both have fond memories of as children is that we had lots of these um, pillowcases. They were the kind that came already stamped, and they were cross stitched or even just embroidered, and then with the crochet, pretty lacy crochet edges. Mm -hmm. um, this one is um, got the the needle. What am I trying to say? Wing needle. The oh, wing sorry, needle it's, hole. It's the a hem stitching. Hem stitching. Thank you already done and ready to go and so this one is of course not done yet but I'm gonna do that one I know we got... have the same pattern it's the oh same that's design. right yeah so that'll oh, be fun hey some floss fell out of this project. this this was the floss that was folded up with these there's there's something cases. folded up in here what was there this that's is the fun, fun part the it's, discoveries yeah I know I don't know what, what it is did she fold up in there Embroidery lesson chart. Oh, cute. I'm not. For longer lasting loveliness, always use DMC. <laughs> that's so, so that's fun. fun. So there's those. 
And she had. I'm excited to do those. A tablecloth that she had started. It was one of the stamped tablecloth kits. And Which she, I am all for. Thank you yeah, very much. She I had love started that. it, and that was another one that my uncle said, "Oh, nobody's gonna want that." And I'm like, it's, "Are you crazy? <laughs> it's already halfway done. Are you kidding me? Yes." And then That's I can enjoy so it. Fun. So. And I really like these. How they have the they have the cross stitch. But they also have the embroidery elements, yeah. like the lazy, uh, lazy daisy, daisy and, and the satin knot. stitch, satin stitch, and things so, like that. So, the challenge for me will be finding the matching threads. So you know, I have a bunch of thread that I inherited from my mother-in-law that is probably concurrent to this. And so have to I also look. had piles and piles and piles from her house that we sorted through. Okay. It could be in there. It could be in there. That's good. But That's if so not, pretty. I'll just take it with me to the store and get as close as you can, can and not yeah. worry if it's not perfect. Yeah. So pretty. So, um, here's another, um, this one hasn't been begun, but here's another, oh, I thought I brought two of these, but apparently I only grabbed one, but another tablecloth that's a stamped Wait, one. Wait, it's because you picked one and I ended up with three because you did other things. Well, I have another one at home too, oh, okay. for sure. I have two. So anyway, but um, this one is really pretty. Isn't that fun? Definitely the same kind of a thing. This one's almost. This one has a tiny bit of embroidery elements that are not cross stitch, but the vast majority is mm -hmm. cross stitch. But I like how it has this center kind of medallion, um, a pretty um, texture in the. You probably can't really see that, but in the tablecloth itself. So that's fun. So you've got a couple of those I've, as I've well. I've got a, a few different ones with like interlocking hearts made of lazy daisy stitches. I like the little um, like forget me not blue flowers That's in the really center. Pretty. This one's really pretty. So uh, this is the slippery slope we were talking about, Emily. I know. You see with Aunt Jerry how many projects and how many kits she had. You saw some, you saw a small fraction of them. And it was a, not a small amount. <laughs> and that's what happens with all of us when you get into something. <laughs> because the start... possibilities are endless. <laughs> yes. And so I tried to be very um, uh, realistic oh, and yeah. selective as I yeah. brought things back because I already have a lot of my own things. But I do like the connection with my aunt. So here's one of her cross stitch charts that she had purchased a kit for. And she loved a lot of oriental themed um, decor in her house because her mother did as well. Also that was a very popular um, theme for a while. So there's a kit for that one. And then there's this beautiful one with pansies that there's a kit for. This is one of the kits. This is the one I was saying I might do next. Although I'm not so sure if I love the colors of it. I might, I might tweak colors. those colors, but um, I don't anticipate using the matte. But I thought that might be kind of a fun one to do. And I like it because I haven't done the uh, outlining with the back stitching. Isn't that back stitching that you do the outlining uh -huh. with? So I, I thought that would be. A, I like to do something that each product project, I try and learn something new. That's what I do with most, mm -hmm. like with my knitting and so on. I mean, not every project, but I like to speckle those in. So I thought it'd be fun to add a new element. Plus, it's already here in the All together. kit. I want to just do it. So I'll probably do the same colors actually. I liked going through. Um, just seeing all of the different projects that she had but I feel like doing that you learn a lot about a person mm -hmm. and I definitely learned a lot about my aunt and colors that she liked and things that I didn't really know about her that I thought maybe I did but also I'd come across something and remember oh I totally forgot doing that with her and so it was really sweet uh, getting to know her a little bit better so I'm just thinking if you go through your supplies mm -hmm. if somebody went through your supplies what would they learn about you Oh yeah, that's an excellent question. What would they learn about you? They'd probably learn that I am a hoarder and I like to dabble in every single <laughs> type of craft that ever happened. <laughs> I want I want to see when you're going to get into silversmithing. 
that's your actually Ella really, <laughs> really wants to do that yeah the, I can really I can see that. that I can see that yeah <laughs> oh that's so fun it makes me so. miss her oh. Oh. I wasn't able to be there that day when you were going through things I had so much work that I couldn't put off and but as I was working I knew you were over there and yeah. so I just had a little conversation with her instead and that was lovely yeah. anyway all, All right. right, it's time for our ending where we'll share some shop news. So, Emily, did you want to start? Sure. So, I have actually decided to slow down for the month of July and August when it comes to my shop. So, unfortunately, I'm not offering Hogwarts clubs for those two months. However, I will be back in September and it's going to be a good one, you guys. <laughs> it's the actually the very first idea I came up with. You know which one it is. No, oh, I don't remember. You'll, You'll have to. Tell I'll me. tell you. Um, it's gonna be awesome, and so just be ready for that. Oh um, yes. You okay. know which one yes. it is. Okay. <laughs> and but I do have some things that are going into my shop that will be up for Thursday. Thursday is the Fourth of July here in the U.S. Well, it's the Fourth of July everywhere. I hope. It's but the it same is day. Independence Day for Which us in the US <laughs> and I thought I'm gonna celebrate by putting some fun things in my shop and having a little sale so I will be having the following things I have um, tea with Tumnus on DK weight I have a sweaters quantity of that one um, same thing with the stone table on DK this is all my classic DK base and not a tame lion on my classic DK base this is the colorway that is my primary color in my Sapilla sweater for those who have asked. I will also have two Love Note sweater kits, which will each include two skeins of um, classic sock and two skeins of fantasy fluff in Opera Dancer's Daughter. Those will be available. Um, if I get to where I want to be, there will also be two kits each in the color just Jane, okay. which um, is a lovely light soft gray with just some little flecks of color in it as well. Um, I have some in the garden, which is so fun. And I also will have this on my new Sci-Fi Sparkle, which is a gold Stellina base. And I have one, count them, one last skein of Don't Bother Me, I'm Reading on classic sock so that is it for that one for a while so all of those things will be in the shop um, I will not have advent calendars in the shop at the same time because they cannot be ordered with other items and I just find it easier to not have it in the shop unless there's nothing else in the shop like that's it can be only that um, just because we have to keep those separate and people get confused about that but um, but on the 4th, those things will all be in the shop. So that's exciting. And in the meantime, if you are looking for a colorway that you don't see in my shop, I continue to do custom orders. So I have people that email me and I do custom orders all the time. All the time. Um, so if you have something that you wanted and you haven't seen it, please reach out to me and let me know because I'm happy to help you with that. What about your... Um, call out for testers. Thank you for the reminder. So for my patterns, um, I am, as, <laughs> I, I'm not going to be doing the Ada Lily socks for a while, and um, so I will not need to test knit that one. So there will be more information about my patterns and test knits on our website, meanwhile at thecastle.com, and you can find out information there about my patterns and about um, any information regarding those test knits. So thank you for those who have reached out to me. I really appreciate that. All right. I, this is what I was trying to grab earlier, but it's too far, was the Festival Fizz colorway. I have a handful of these available in the shop right now. Cute. I've actually worked really hard on keeping my shop full of a variety of things so that there's always something there for you to find. And I have um, colorways in fingering weight and in DK and um, on my mohair lace uh, cotton candy base. 
So I've been doing a lot of sock kits lately. One for this time of year that's perfect for right now because so I fun. love red, white, and blue, but it's also just great for anybody who loves popsicles. This one's a bomb pop sock set and it's got red flex and some white and blue and it's just a really fun cute, colorway cute. and I've got a few of those left and I just released, I spelled this wrong on here, so sorry, I'm gonna put my finger right there. <laughs> what is it? I put puppy, P-U-P-P-Y, instead, instead of P-U-P-P-I-E. This oh. is Slush Puppy Sock Set, and this is two 20 gram mini skeins that I've just twisted together because it looks fun that way, uh, in the colors cantaloupe and banana, because to me this screams summer, screams summer, just, right now when it's hot that this is what I want to knit with. Um, and then I have lots of different kits in my shop right now for different projects. I have a lot of some birds of a feather shawl kits, some hat kits. I've got um, two kits to do what I showed on the last episode. Kind of a somewhat gradient speckle shawl Kit where it takes two skeins and you start with a skein. Each of these skeins I was specifically dyed so that the um, inner half of it, the inner side has fewer speckles than the outer. So that as you knit down, it goes from a little bit more mellow in speckles to a lot heavier. But if you need two skeins, then you'll, you'll start with the lighter speckle end, go to the heavier speckle end, and then start with the heavy speckle end and you can work your way to the lighter. And I have labeled these two, use number one, use first, use second, because this one is even heavier speckled, so you can continue that in your shawls or whatever projects you're doing. So I have one scrub behind your ears set and one, can you imagine that set left. That's really fun. So you can go there and find lots of different things and contact me if there's something that you're looking for that you can't find and I can do my best to accommodate you. Wonderful. So. Thank you so much for being here with us. And anything else? Stay cool. Yeah, sending off. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna go and uh, get some ice cream or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have Bye. a good day. Bye.